Let's go live to our Stephen LaDrew. Stephen, is it dangerous to attempt to change governments in the middle of an economic recovery? Well, the government's going to be saying that it is dangerous for that. But as we reported a few days ago, Ann, we know that the planes are leased. We know that the buses are painted. So it looks like we're just another step closer to the reality of a spring election. Let's just bring in Lauren Cutner here from Deloitte. Lauren, give us your overall view of what this, you know, from a, as an accounting point of view, what this budget was all. All right, well, first of all, I, I, am I surprised? I'm not the least bit surprised. This is uh, the type of budget that I really expected, um, trying to placate everybody. Uh, a lot of little tiny uh, incentives. Guy walking down the street, he got an extra $5. I mean, everybody <laughs> seemed to get something on this budget. One really good thing was they did not uh, change the corporate tax cuts that were planned. So that will help in terms of productivity, uh, reinvesting in, in uh, machinery and jobs, etc. But, I, you know, we hope that they could have done a lot more in terms of innovation. Mm -hmm. They have some focused um, uh, uh, participation and support of, you know, the Perimeter Institute and others that are well-deserving. But in terms of broader-based innovative support, uh, our R&D program, which Canada was a leader 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, we're not a leader anymore. And we really need to, uh, we're part of a global community. And there are 37 countries around the world that have tax incentive programs in their, in their tax legislation that assist their local companies in R&D. And ours is starting to fall behind. Megan Harris, is that what Lawrence just talked about? Is that as a result of the minority government and the fact that they had to sort of give something to everybody to try to keep uh, going? I think that has played a part. But, the, you know, to Lawrence's point, they didn't have a large um, pool of money that they've dedicated to innovation. That being said, what they did do is have they've created some, uh, the innovation chair of excellence research, yes. excellence chair, sorry, at the college's level. And that's important because in the past, what we've seen is most of the funding for innovation actually goes to universities. Mm -hmm. Whereas the colleges, which are very hands-on and practical, and we, of which we have four large colleges in the city, this is the first time I can, I can recall that innovation has been targeted to help colleges commercialize. Let's shift to the real Research. issue, because we are all talking about the budget, but we know this budget was all about politics. Yeah. Megan Harris, you've been in politics for a long, long time. We just heard they're going to visit their caucuses tomorrow and discuss it. What are the chances of an election? At this stage, I think it's almost too far, we're too far down the plank to turn back. So I would say we're at about a 95% chance that we will be going to the polls. If the three leaders say we're going to go against this, uh, this budget, most of their MPs will follow them, won't they? Well, I mean, the Liberals have been rearing for um, an election for some time. And so for Michael Ignatieff, it's his first one. It will likely be his last unless he comes some up triumphant. Some Liberals the election that way. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> and, you know, they're trying to use it to clean house. That's an expensive way to do it on the backs of Canadians. Um, on the NDP side, we know that Jack Layton's health is not the very best. In fact, I saw him in Ottawa last week. He was frail. He could barely walk. Yep. And he was really thin. And so I'm quite astonished really I am, that he has um, dropped the gauntlet so decisively on this on this budget and so I really don't see much room for him to but, but step he did, back. But he did do that. Okay, we're going to go back to Anne. We'll see you guys later on. Anne, back to you. Steve